Baba Shuaib, the correctional officer, born in Accra, Ghana, a Quranic researcher and a critical thinker based on religion, who does online lectures based on the guidance of the Quran on platforms such as Facebook, YouTube and TikTok since 2018, in Finland, and 13 years, QBE, in Classical Arabic and MSA in Quranic Arabic. The author of the Refer to the Quran which helps every novice to understand the steps towards understanding the great Quran and the guidance of God in it. Sectarianism is a reality of life because, se because sects exist. Because sects exist and because people naturally incline towards the charisma of a person. And then it's all down to how that person educates them. So therefore, it's sad for me to say this, right? And I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm just as much a danger to you, perhaps, right? But you know, it's sad to say it. But we, head leaders of sects and people who teach are responsible for sectarianism because we teach in a sectarian way. Do you understand? Because we do not, we are supposed to help people na because sectarianism is a natural tendency. Because people generally naturally develop loyalties, naturally develop a sense of awe, they get awestruck by the charisma of an individual. Do you understand? We're supposed to educate them in a, in a way that, that, allow, that, that, their, that rational thought, that they, they understand their religion in a rational way, so that that can emancipate them from a kind of, from an excessive loyalty, an excessive blind following. But we don't educate people like that. Do you understand? When it comes to religious, when it comes to every other aspect of your education, you're a perfectly logical doctor. You're a perfectly logical lawyer. You're perfectly logical about all of that, right? But when it comes to when it comes to religion, you're an idiot. Like you don't think at all. It's like oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do the zikr. It, it's that. Hang on a second. Why? Why does all of that intelligence that you apply in every other aspect of your life get suspended when it comes to your religious? Sectarianism is a reality of life. Because, se because sects exist. Because sects exist and because people naturally incline towards the charisma of a person. And then it's all down to how that person educates them. So therefore, it's sad for me to say this, right? And I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm just as much a danger to you perhaps, right? But, you know, it's sad to say it, but we head leaders of sects and people who teach are responsible for sectarianism because we teach in a sectarian way. Do you understand? Because we do not, we are supposed to help people, na because sectarianism is a natural tendency, because people generally naturally develop loyalties, naturally develop a, a sense of awe, they get awestruck by the charisma of an individual. Do you understand? We're supposed to educate them in a, in a way that, that, allow, that, that, their, that rational thought, that they, they understand their religion in a rational way, so that that can emancipate them from a kind of, from an excessive loyalty an excessive blind following but we don't educate people like that do you understand when it comes to religious when it comes to every other aspect of your education you're a perfectly logical doctor you're a perfectly logical lawyer you're perfectly logical about all of that right but when it comes to when it comes to religion you're an idiot like you don't think at all it's like oh it doesn't matter i'm just going to do the zikr it is that hang on a second why why does all of that intelligence that you apply in every other aspect of your life get suspended when it comes to your religious sectarianism is a reality of life because se because sects exist, because sects exist, and because people naturally incline towards the charisma. Peace be upon you all. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this is the Baba Shribe, the correctional officer. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for coming. Sorry for keeping you wicked waiting a bit. Um, correctional officer had to fill up the stomach with something nice uh -huh, before you know coming to the 
to deal with the mushriks hadith you use so mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank you all for your presence and once again for being here i appreciate your presence it keeps me moving uh thank you all for the support uh, i seek refuge with allah against the case devil let me give some shout outs i see uh patro Ab Ab abdul abbas uh uh houdini i see you uh only the truth matters hey brother hamza malik i see you salam uh thanks for being around <clears throat> dangana uh, i see you salam uh sister zainab kaiser i see you salam uh sister alma johnson i see you salam sdjb uh peace be upon you mustafa haydar <clears throat> uh aftab Mehran says, Salam everyone, newly subscribed. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Alma Johnson says, Love this new introduction, super cool and so well made. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, thanks to this brother Mohammed for, for drafting this perfectly. I appreciate <clears throat> Rashid. Uh, Soy Brightier, I see you. Hey, Salis Jimmy, I see you. Salam Naganka, Salis. Uh, Baba Sido, I see you, Salam Naganka. Uh, yes, Brother Marwan, I see you as well. Uh, Sister Natalia, I see you, Salam. Um, Diana, we have uh, Abu Thomas, uh, LV. Yes, it keeps going like that. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. I have Munavir, Nikoti Jani, Habib Rabbani, uh, Tujis. Hey, Tujis, I see you, Salam, bro. I see you. <clears throat> uh sister alma says am i the only one dealing with an unclear picture uh it, it should be clear enough uh, i think it could be from your side so i i recommend maybe you refresh if it's your phone you know you 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 refresh everything and come back <clears throat> yeah i've checked the resolution and it's good it's it's clear enough Right. Uh Musa Sedu, I see you. Joe I I I see you. Salam to you or Hussein Ali, Abu Bakar, Mohammed, Emily Trinity, Amda, Yelsida, Abu Bakar Bangura. Hey, bra Sedu Naganka. I see you. Sedu. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming. I appreciate that. And for those on uh TikTok, let me see. Uh for those on TikTok. I see Amin. Uh, yeah, hey, Amin, I, can, I see you. Salam. Uh, I see uh, Robin. Say free Israel. Oh, wow. Uh, I see T T C M Yuki. Salam. <clears throat> and who do we have? Who do we have? Who do we have? uh robin if you keep disturbing people here i'll block you please let let uh-huh okay i just muted him so he cannot keep commenting so thank you all for those on tiktok as well kindly share so other people can join let's 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 have fun <clears throat> yeah uh -huh. i appreciate your presence thank you all for the support and this keeps me moving right uh -huh. your presence will, will give me the, the hope to keep throwing more bombshells for you right so that you can actually know how to set up these mushriks right abdullah shakuna i see you thank you for coming right uh -huh. so <clears throat> as usual you can see me adorning the correctional officer uh t-shirt uh for those on tiktok as well you can see uh baba shrive the correctional officer t-shirt you can see it as it is uh -huh. it comes in different colors and whatever have you uh, it's a t-shirt with all sizes you can get any size you want every size slim medium uh a small medium large extra large and there's unisex both for men and women available uh let's support this and to set the mushriks a buzz right uh -huh. let them be agitated when they see this thing growing uh sarki martin i see you salam uh -huh. it comes in different colors so far we have a uh, few people who have ordered their copies and i appreciate the support thank you for supporting uh this movement towards god right 
just like I keep quoting Quran chapter 61, verse 14, Isa alayhi salam, he called his disciples by telling them who will be his supporters towards God. So I'm calling people towards God, but they have to be a police officer. And that is me, correctional officer. So I have to put it out there for the mushriks to see me. Right? Uh -huh. we, cannot, we cannot play hide and seek with them. We have to be all out just like they are all out with us. We have to also be all out with them. Right? Yes. So uh, thank you all for coming. I see uh, I see you all. Uh, <clears throat> uh, LV, I'll come to your question later. You're asking a question. I'll, I'll pin your question. I'll come back to your question, God willing. Uh, Brother Isa Watson, I see you. Uh, yes, and that reminds me. Also for this, um, for the GoFundMe donations, it's ongoing. Like I said, now we have 32% already. 32%. Uh, we have we started from september october so end of october november we are ending this then we start everything the, uh, the distribution so at least if we can even get 50 percent of the donations then we are good to go right the reason is because i don't want us to start whereby there's traffic in between pausing distributing then we pause so i want it to be done all at once uh so i appreciate the support for those who are do donated so far uh, this is Hop Nima uh, Foundation. The donation is there. You can donate. Uh, for those who have already donated, I appreciate uh, your support and your generosity. God bless you for this. For those who are willing to donate as well, uh, you are welcome to support. So thank you all. And as well, we also, uh, if there is enough funds, we do extend hands to Brother Issa Watson's feeding program, which I, I, I would like to commend that a lot. In South Africa, Cape Town, Right. Uh -huh. So we, we, we would, with all diligence, we are willing and hoping to also support uh, from the same funds that you give. We can extend hands to Brother Issa Watson as well. Right. So I will appreciate the support coming in. And we uh, I, we do use it in a diverse ways to help those in need as well. If there is enough funds available. Uh -huh. So this is not the first time we have organized this, but I appreciate the support as well. Uh, so we have Tariq Ayub. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> uh, Serki Martin says, where can I get? Don't worry. For those who are based in Ghana, you 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 get your copy. I'm working. I'm working. Uh, I'm working for the actually the Quran, the great Quran translation to to get there first. Right. Uh -huh. Then we can think about other other things. So this is based, basically for those based around the world, Europe, you know, America, Canada they can be able to get it for now but uh, and australia and so on as well but for those in africa i will appreciate it if you can have the patience to wait a bit right uh -huh. <clears throat> yes uh adejari kasim thank you thank you i appreciate that um i see you uh salam loyola jose rashida i see you hey abdul samad i see you brother uh -huh. thank you so for those on TikTok, thank you as well. Kindly share, then we can start today's program. Aha, Afalata Akile says, I see you matching the outfits. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, I have to. Right. I have to look presentable for my audience. Uh, if the Mushriks can have Mufti Menk looking appealing in, in his, uh, you know, <laughs> in his Hadithi Yun costumes, we also have to look presentable in our own costumes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So thank you all. So let's move on with the topic of today. This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to Allah for I am not among the idolaters. So today's topic, as you see, I put on, uh, it has to do with the confusion uh, of the uh, Hadith Yunus, right? The confusion of the Hadith Yunus. If you check on my YouTube channel, I, I give it like we have to, what it's like unraveling the confusion that is what you need to know about the Hadith use. And when I say Hadith use, just like they tag us, the believers or the Muslims who happen to follow the Quran alone for guidance. Listen carefully. The Quran alone for guidance, right? It doesn't mean I cannot read other books. It doesn't mean I cannot study other books, right? It doesn't mean I cannot check other books. It doesn't mean I cannot go and verify other books. But the point is I seek my guidance from the book of god so any book 
which is not the book of God. I don't take my guidance there. No. Right? So in order to confirm this, if you read chapter 2, verse 2 to verse 5, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, you believe in what was revealed before you and what was revealed to you. You can believe. But taking up your guidance, you have to take it from God. It doesn't have to be from any other source. Quran chapter 2 verse 38 confirms this to you. And Quran chapter 20 verse 123 to 124 confirms that to you. You have to follow the guidance of God. That is when you have no fear or grief. That is when you will not go astray or will you suffer. Simplicity is what is needed. Take the guidance of God and you are safe. Don't take any guidance from anybody. Even Quran chapter 2 verse 272, it tells the prophet, Laysa alayka hudahum, walakinna allaha yadi man yasha. He told the prophet explicitly, their guidance is not based on you, right? However, God guides whomever he wills. So it is the guidance of God we are seeking for. It doesn't mean we are the enemies of the prophet. We appreciate his position. We honor him. We support him. But we have to follow the light which was revealed with him, which is the, the Quran, Quran chapter 7 verse 157. So we, we obey him as a messenger, but as a prophet, he is dead and gone. And he was only based in a particular timeline with his own people. His prophethood was restricted to his timeline. His messengership, it does extend till today. Because if you read Quran chapter 7 verse 157 up to 158, the messenger himself, he says, Kul, ya nas, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an. He says, I'm a messenger of God to you all. He never said, I'm a prophet of God to you all. You understand? But it is out of the foolishness of some people who want to actually impose narrations which has nothing to do with Islam. Al-Islam, the completed Islam, Quran chapter 5 verse 3, where God says he has perfected the Islam for us in the book of God. Because the book of God in itself is complete. Quran chapter 6 verse 115 God says, Right? So the God is telling the messenger, the word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. That is it. There is no alteration to his words. So what else do you need for guidance? Right? It takes the arrogance of a human being. Just like God told Musa, alayhi salam, Take what I have given you and be of those who are grateful. So I've taken the book of God where it says it is sufficient. And I said it's sufficient for my guidance. The foolish mushriks are telling us, no, Ahi, come and follow our garbage books before God can open the gates of heaven for you. Does it make sense? Who should I believe? After God tell, telling me in Quran chapter 6 verse 114, shall I seek a judge other than God while he is the one who has revealed to you the book? explained in detail mufassala it takes a foolish person not to adhere to this simple statement what else do you need so we are going to unravel the confusion of the hadith use right and um, we playing videos as well you see the their hibijibis how they, how messed up they are in the head forget about their degrees or whatever qualifications they have right we can have an educated fool remember Somebody can be educated, but he's a fool. And that is even worse than an ignorant person. When you have an educated fool, uh, uh, trust me, it's worse than somebody who is not educated. Right? Uh -huh. <clears throat> so, thank you all for, your, uh, for coming once again. Uh, I see, I appreciate your presence. Uh, I've given enough shout out, uh, shout outs. I have Amina, I have Rishi, I have Jamil, I, I have Faisal Hussein. I see you, brother. Salam. Uh, I see uh, Mike, Adago, Bilal, age, Bilal, blue. <laughs> One love, bro. Thank you. I see you all. Thank you. So let's start uh, the topic for today. I'm going to, as usual, I, I played a video when I was starting. And the guy's name, the guy is based in UK, uh, right? His name is uh, uh, Shams. Shams Adduha. Ad He's based in UK. And is is I think the college name is uh, Ibrahim College, right? It's based in, for those based in UK. I know you'll be acquainted or aware of this this scholar, right? Right. I, I don't know if he's a scholar or not, but yes, this modern day we define people we see online who talk about Islam. You know, uh -huh, we define them as scholars, right? Okay, no way, no problem. Now I played his video. If you have heard what he said critically. Now I'm going to replay the video. I want you to kindly pay attention 
strictly to what he is saying. And I will be helping you so that we, we break it down and understand what, what message he was trying to pass across that people don't actually reflect about, right? So let's kindly listen to the video. Reality of life. Because, se because sex exists. Because sex exists and because people naturally incline towards the charisma of a person. And then it's all down to how that person educates them. So therefore, it's sad for me to say this, right? And I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm just as much a danger to you perhaps, right? But, you know, it's sad to say it, but we head leaders of sects and people who teach are responsible for sectarianism because we teach in a sectarian way. Do you understand? Because we do not, we are supposed to help people, na because sectarianism is a natural tendency, mm -hmm. because people generally, naturally develop loyalties, naturally develop a, a sense of, awe. they get awestruck by the charisma of an individual. Do you understand? We're supposed to educate them in a, in a way that, that, a la that, that, their, that rational thought, that they, they understand their religion in a rational way, so that that can emancipate them from a kind of, from an excessive loyalty an excessive blind following but we don't educate people like that do you understand when it comes to religious when it comes to every other aspect of your education you're a perfectly logical doctor you're a perfectly logical lawyer you're perfectly logical about all of that right but when it comes to when it comes to religion you're an idiot like you don't think at all it's like oh it doesn't matter i'm just going to do the zikr it it's that hang on a second why why does all of that intelligence that you apply in every other aspect of your life get suspended when it comes to your religious Whatever Allah says, whatever the Prophet ﷺ says, we believe in it and we affirm it without thinking too deeply about, this, uh, about the actuality of this action. I think that's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you, you heard it sounding clearly. For those on TikTok, I don't know if you heard it sounding clearly. By kindly listening again, I'm going to replay the video. Then I'm going to go step by step so that we can comprehend together right there's something i'm looking for from this video it's the guy is from ibrahim college i think it's based in uk right yes it's based in uk for those in uk i know you know you know that guy right uh -huh. there's something i picked up from that video and that thing is very very critical because that guy that guy is a sectarian uh his name is uh is it uh shams shams ad duha that's his name shams ad duha so for this based in uk I, I, I know for sure you know him, right? Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to replay the video. I want you to listen and listen carefully. Not just listen. Listen and listen carefully. This is what I've been saying all these years, and I keep telling you, listen carefully or pay attention carefully. There's a reason why I want you to listen, right? And pay attention. He's a sectarian, by the way. But pay attention, okay? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, greetings, uh, Stephen. I see you. Okay. So let, let, I'm going to replay the video. We pay attention. Let's follow him step by step. Huh? Aha, salam, come. Sectarianism is a reality of life. He says sectarianism, huh? sectarianism is a reality of life, and which is true. You see Sunni, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Qadiriya, Tijaniya, Salafiya, Wahhabiya, you name them, name them. You know the list, right? Istikama, Ibadiya. Help me, help me to name them. Help me, help me, help me. Help me. Uh, help me, help me. Name them. All these groups, right? Sufi, Sufiya, you keep mentioning them. Sectarianism, sectarianism is a reality of life. That is what this guy just said. Now listen. Let's continue. Because, se because sex exists. Because sex exists. Does that mean God approves it? The answer is no. But out of, the, out of their, most of them, their foolishness, they will be quoting hadith and telling you that the prophet said, oh, Islam will be divided into how many? He says 73 sects. And all the, only the ones who follow the Quran and the Sunnah, they are, are right. That's another sect point of view. So you let's, let's listen to uh, Asham Duha himself, right? He's going to break it down critically for the critical thinkers. So listen. Because sex exists and because people naturally incline towards the charisma of a person. He's showing you the reason why sex exists. Because people naturally in, 
climb to the charisma of a person. He's telling you the reason, right? Okay. And then it's all down to how that person educates them. It is all done to have that person educate them. Okay. So therefore, it's sad for me to say this, right? And I. It is sad. He doesn't want to say it. <laughs> it is sad. But he has to say it because it's a reality. He's pinpointing the problems of having sex. It is sad, but though he has to say it, right? So now I'm helping you to discern and actually contemplate on what he's saying and see the reality of life. He himself said it's a reality. Okay. I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm just as much a danger to you, perhaps. And he claims he is much of a danger to the audience listening to him, perhaps. And this is why, Baba Shrive, I try, when I'm teaching you, my audience, I tell you, don't just listen to me like a sheep. Listen and listen carefully. And then take up the proofs I give and investigate for yourself. I'm not saying believe me 100%. You have to investigate, cross-check before you put your faith in there. You give credence to the truth, right? In a house, you, a father must, might have a wife and he have kids. But it doesn't mean all the kids who agree with the father. It doesn't work that way. They can, look, whether you force them, you don't force them. It's not by force for them to, to agree with you. Right? It could be you are telling the truth, but they might not agree with you. It could be you are even lying and they will agree with you. Right? But what I'm saying is, if you're listening to a person, whether because of the charisma of the person, whether you think Baba Shrive is knowledgeable, I have, I'm wise, I have wisdom, and I know how to speak, articulate, don't just listen to me because for the sake of you like me. No. Listen to me critically and take the evidences I've given and reflect upon them. Whatever resonate, resonates with your logic, take it. If it doesn't, put it on the side. Right? There's a difference between not agreeing with somebody and calling the person a liar. There's, it's two different things. You might not agree with somebody doesn't necessarily mean the person is lying. Because may it be what the person is saying, you cannot phantom it. Right? So at that given time, you might not agree. But it doesn't mean the person is lying. Then there's a statement where a person will say, you know he's lying because you know the evidence. You have the factual evidence to prove that the person is lying. You, you see the difference. Then there is a, a point where you are listening to a person. The person might make a slip of a tongue. Might err. That is why Musa alayhi salam said, My Lord does not err or forget. Right? It is only God who does not. Uh -huh. So when you are listening to any learned person, especially learned people, Critically listen, but don't leave your common sense behind. Always take your logic and common sense along so that you ask the relevant questions in order to be guided. Yes, you can get guidance when somebody who has been guided by God is teaching you from the words of God. Yes, you can get guidance from that. Quran chapter 7 verse 181, right? Uh -huh. They are those who take up the guidance of God and by it they do justice and they guide the people by it, right? And they do justice. So if God has guided me, yes, I can use God's guidance to guide, right? Uh -huh. So now let's go back to listening to Shams Abduha. I want us to pick some wisdom from what he just said. So let's listen carefully. <laughs> right? But, you know, it's sad to say, but we head leaders of sects and people who teach are responsible for sectarianism because we... He says head leaders of sect, people who lead sects and teach are responsible for these problems you find in sectarianism, uh, sectarianism on, or religions. He's telling you who the problem is. And that is why you see Baba Shrai putting the videos of scholars here to talk about them. It doesn't mean I want to criticize their personality. No. It is based on their beliefs and what they are talking about is what I'm criticizing. And I keep telling you, for a logical assessment of somebody's religion or faith or belief, instead of telling the person he's right or wrong, don't do that. Because ego can play a, uh, ego can play a role. Right? People have ego, especially people who are leading particular de denominations. They have ego, especially if you want to correct them publicly. So instead of telling them they are wrong or right, don't do that. What you need to do is 
you have to ask them critical questions. You have to ask them questions that will push them to reason so that they can see the lapses in their own logic, something to contradict what they believe in. Ask them questions that can contradict what they are believing in. So that they can see the lapses in their belief or in their faith. By doing that, so that they can come to their own realizations independently. Because when they see the loophole in their faith, that is when they are curious to know yours. Because they've seen theirs is a flop. So now they'll be curious to listen. They'll give you all the ears. So don't be surprised you have a wife, you have a husband, you have a son, you have a daughter, you have an uncle, you have your mother, your father. You're trying to convince them and they think you're crazy, you're mad. Don't be surprised because they are not ready. The, the brain has not been triggered. They are not ready to listen to you because in the first place, they think, who are you? They've already given the credence to the scholar. That's just like this Shams ad duha is talking about. They've already given all the attention to that scholar. So not till they hear that same statement from you coming from the scholar, they can, it can never trigger their senses. You can only trigger their senses when you ask them critical questions. Don't be the one answering. No, 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 no. You haven't reached that level yet. You are still learning. And that is why you like to support what I do, because you are still learning, right? So what you need to do is you ask critical questions to whoever you think you know, your, your mother, your father, your scholar. Ask them critical questions. Don't act like you know it all. Just ask them. If they turn the tables around to say, okay, let me ask you, just say, hey, I'm not a scholar. You are our leader. You are the scholar. So I want to know from you. Why is it that we pray like this. Why is it that when you are sitting in your prayer, you do your hand like this? The scholars are telling you, you are, you are weeping the devil. <laughs> I wonder if the devil is. <laughs> you are weeping, which devil? So imagine how many billions of people doing this all over the world. You keep weeping this devil for how many years, but still he keep coming back. I don't get it. You understand? So they will tell you, it's, you are weeping the devil like this when you do this in your salat. Uh -huh. So just ask them a logical question. Sheikh, you say when we do this in our salah, we are weeping at them. He will say, yes, the prophet says so. I just played a video of Yasir Kadi. When they told them, the, when they tell them the prophet said this, they just take it without thinking logically about it. They will just take it, accept it. Right? So critical thinking is lost. And this, this scholar is going to show you that weakness in, in sectarian uh, religions, right? He's going to show, I'll play the video. But I'm helping you to reason, whether your father, your mother, don't act like you know when you're questioning them. Just ask them, curiosity. Just say, oh, uh, uh, mom, I heard they said the prophet went on a flying uh, burqa uh, to, to the sky to go and burak. Is it burak or burqa? To go and bring uh, five, five, 50 prayers or five prayers. Is it true? They'll say, yeah. So then say, mom or dad, then... If he went to negotiate 50 prayers to get five, then where are the rakats? The rakats were not mentioned. How, how many were they? You understand? Now your parents will start thinking critically because he doesn't know your standing point of view. You are asking so that you can pinpoint the lapses in the person's faith. Now do you start critically thinking? They'll be thinking critically. Mm. My son, the question you ask is true. I need to find a scholar to ask. And be rest assured, your father will come back and tell you. I asked the scholar, he says, mm, that's what they told us. We, shall, we have to just believe. Okay, so let, let's go back to the video. Pay attention. We teach in a sectarian way. Okay. Do you understand? Because we so the leaders who are leading these sectarian groups are teaching in a sectarian way. That is why they keep telling you, uphold the Quran and Sunnah. Come and follow Shia. Come and follow Sunnah. Come and follow Tijaniya. This is you. Reflect now. Try to reminisce and think about the past, the scholars you have known in your life. See the propaganda. See what they are actually, actually inviting you to. You can see that they are inviting you to either Sunnah, to either Shia, to either Tijaniya, to either... Do you, you understand? They are cults is what they are inviting you. Not to God. Understand the difference. Okay. We do not. We are supposed to help people now because sectarianism is a natural tendency mm -hmm. because people generally naturally develop loyalties. Nat you understand? Sectarianism is a natural tendency. And people de develop the, this loyalty for these sectarian groups. And that is why somebody will say, I'm a proud Sunni. 
I'm a proud Shia. I'm a proud Tijania. I'm proud Ahmadiyya. That's what they do. This is the tendency there. Okay. They develop a, a sense of awe. They get awestruck by the charisma of an individual. Do you understand? So the charisma of an individual, this is why in the sectarian religions, you can see they are upholding one person that they are having this veneration and this um, uh, amazement. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. We're supposed to educate them in a in a way that that a lot that that their that rational thought that that is what Baba Shreve does. You are supposed to educate people that allows their rational thoughts. Do what they they understand the religion in a rational way. To understand the religion in a rational way. Hello, this man is speaking on my behalf. So that that can emancipate them from a kind of, from an excessive loyalty. So that it can emancipate them from an excessive loyalty to who? To the scholars, sectarian point of view. Rationality is needed in a religion. Rational. Rationality is needed in a religion. You can't just say out of foolishness, oh, because the Hadith says it, so I believe. Because the Quran says it, I believe. Can't you use your IQ, your reasoning? Why do you think God gave you the brain and the head, the big head you have? Why do you think you have it? Huh? What? what? No, why do you think God gave you all that? So that you become a sheep? No. He gave you for a reason. And that is why in this modern day and age, common sense in religion is out of the equation. People, not even in religion, when it comes to the matters of politics, you mention it, everything. Common sense is gone. It's out of the equation. Logic, reasoning, rationale, out. And people are more, what? Sensitive in this modern day. They are more sensitive. Okay, let's listen. An excessive blind following. But we don't educate people like that. You see? So... When you teach people how to use their rationale, it will stop them from being excessive in blind following. They will not become blind followers. They will be critical thinkers and they will ask the right questions in order to have guidance. Right? So ever since I got guided me and I started my lectures, online lectures, when people send me questions in my inbox, on my phone, it is always critical questions and critical thinking questions. It liberates the person from mental slavery. This is what I'm here to do for you. Other leaders, other African, other uh, truth seekers, you know, they try to liberate people in a different aspect, maybe politically, uh, through other means. I have decided to liberate people from mental slavery when it comes to the matters of religion. In religion, you have to have critical thinking ability and use your rationale don't be a sheep don't be a fool who is a fool someone who lacks good judgment and that's why you see me many a times using such a word you think i'm insulting no because god says it quran chapter 25 verse 44 he says do you think that most of them listen or reason he says no they are just like livestock and he says they are even more astray than the livestock yes to be honest, they are just like livestock. That's the truth. So let's listen to Shams. Do you understand? When it comes to religious, when it comes to every other aspect of your education, you're a perfectly logical doctor. You're a perfectly logical lawyer. You're perfectly logical about all of that, right? But when it comes to when it comes to religion, you're an idiot. Aha, uh -huh, I love this part. I'm going back to what he said. Let's listen to what he said. You're perfectly logical. When it comes to religion, listen to what he said. An excessive blind following, but we don't educate people like that. Do you understand? When it comes to religious, when it, when it comes to religion, when it comes to any religious issue, listen. When it comes to every other aspect of your education. You're perfectly logical. When it comes to every aspect of your life, meaning, but maybe education or anything, listen. Well, doctor, you're perfect. When it comes to your doctorate issue, you are a logical doctor. Very logical lawyer. You're perfect. When it comes to being law, you are a logical lawyer. You see, law using logic, doctor using logic. Okay, let's go. Logical about all of that, right? Now you are 
logical about all of these issues he just mentioned. You're using logic. Politics, you use logic. Everything, you use logic. Now, let me show you where the logic is missing now. He's going to show you. But when it comes to, when it comes to religion, you're an idiot. When it comes to religion, you are an, an idiot. He's telling you, when it comes to religion, you are a person of subnormal intelligence. This is what he, a sectarian, has noticed from every sectarian cult. He knows. He's just telling you in the broad daylight. Because they've already done with, they are done with you. So it is the saddest thing he has to tell the audience, but he has to say it anyway. Because he's done with you. It's just like you having a gun on top of somebody. You know you've done with him. You start telling him, I killed your mom. I killed your dad. I killed your this. You start telling, confessing everything. Because you know the gun is there. You can shoot again and kill. Just like Mumtaz al Haq also tell you, you are blind followers of Hadith. Whether you like it, you have no choice. You, you are blind followers. Because the scholars know they have done with you. That is why, Baba Shraib, I'm trying to liberate and try to let you emancipate yourself from mental slavery when it comes to religion, especially Islam. Like, you don't think at all. It's like, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do the zikr. So when it comes to religion, you are an idiot. You don't think at all. You just say, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do zikr. A scholar, Mufti Menko, will just stand and say, oh, you have to do tasbih thousand times. That Jannah will be built for you. Then you say, Allah Akbar. That is it. You hate your brother. You kill your brother. You cheat your brother. But you think you'll just take a tasbih and do this thousand times. And God, you think God will just build paradise for you. <laughs> so that logic is gone. You see, in that aspect, logic is gone. But you are a medical doctor, you are a lawyer, you are a scientist, you are an engineer, you are whatever. All this aspect, you are using logic. But as soon as it comes to religion, you are dumb. You are an idiot. You are a fool. You are a bozo. Why? Listen. It, it's that, hang on a second. Why, why does all of that intelligence that you apply in every other aspect of your life get suspended when it comes to your religious sectarianism is so why does your your logic get suspended when it comes to matters of your religion that's what he just said the last statement he said why 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 does all the logic you have that you can apply to your 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 law your doctorate your education politics everything why does it when it comes to religion this is suspended because the same scholars told you not to use logic they say don't use common sense in religion don't use your logic after God telling you, he has revealed the Quran in Arabic language so that you mean, so that you may, will give thought, you will reason. Akal, when we say akal is to give reasoning, to use your, 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 what, faculty, to reason. Do you see the point? Now, I play this video for a reason. I'm going to show you how reasoning doesn't work for the sectarians. Listen to what Yasir Qadi said in this short video. Whatever Allah says, whatever the Prophet says, we believe in it and we affirm it without thinking too deeply about this, uh, about the actuality of this action. I think that's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a Did you hear what Yasir Qadi said? Whatever God says, whatever the prophet says, we just believe without thinking too deep about it. We just believe. What? He, he is lying. Yasir Qadi is lying. Because the same God tell you in Quran chapter 4 verse 82, Afala yatadabbaruna the Quran. Walau kena min indi gairillah, la wajiduhu fihi ikhtilafan kathira. Do they do not contemplate the Quran? Had it been from other than God, they would have found there in numerous discrepancies, or we can see contradictions. The same God in Quran chapter 47, verse 24. He said, Do they do not contemplate the Quran? Or are there locks on their hearts? So, Yasir Kari, you are sitting down, say, whatever God says, whatever the prophet says, we just believe without thinking too deep about it. And that's it. No, you no need to use logic. No need to. Why are these scholars fooling themselves and fooling the audience? 
because the audience are amazed because you are told Yasir Kadi has a doctorate, has a degree in, in Hadith, whatever, whatever. Hadith, science of Hadith, science of garbage books. And you, you are amazed. You think he's knowledgeable. Hey, this same guy who said 310 and something. 310 and something. Is it a number of people? Can you count the number of people and say 310 and something? Where does that exist? Okay, I'm going to show you. Listen to Yasir Kadi. Count the number of people. The number of prophets and see what he said 310 and something. Let's listen to Yasser Kari. Where's the video? Listen what he said his army, right? The people who crossed over after that were around 310 and something. So, this number, some seems to be recurring in a number of times. So, the Prophet said, How many Rasul? The Prophet said, 310 and something. A large quantity, meaning don't trivialize just because it's 310, don't think it's trivial. <laughs> Are you serious? No, seriously. What, what is this? A university graduate? A graduate from what Azhar or whatever, whatever uh, university. The number of people, pro prophets, three hundred and ten and something. Three hundred and ten and something. What? Three hundred and ten. Remember, three hundred and ten is complete already, and then he says and something. The number of people, and he says he's the exact number. How can this number be exact number? You you said three hundred and ten. You added something, and then you say it's exact number. Exact number of what? Listen to the video. Look, his army, right? The people who crossed over after that were around three hundred and ten and something. So this number. Some seems to be recurring in a number of times. So the Prophet said, how many Rasul? The Prophet said, 310 and something, a large quantity. Meaning don't trivialize, just because it's 310, don't think it's trivial. What? And they are attributing this to the Prophet, saying that the Prophet says the number of Rasul, 310 and something. Yeah. Then he says it's the same number of the people who crossed the, the river with uh, Talut, and then... 310, and he keeps saying it confidently. This guy is a graduate, yes, Yasir Kadi, with the big audience in the world. Yasir Kadi. That's him. So no wonder you heard in the short video what he said. Listen what whatever he said. Whatever Allah says, whatever the Prophet says, we believe in it and we affirm it without thinking too deeply about, this, uh, about the actuality of this action. I think that's just dumb. <laughs> you see? Now, these are the people, I'm telling you, the confusion of the Hadith use. They are confused. But it depends on you, the audience, are you actually confused also? Because if you actually listen to these people carefully, they wouldn't be repeating themselves with these garbage narrations. You don't ask critical questions. Because you think these people, because they tell you they are a he's telling you he's a graduate. He has a certificate. You remember somebody else sets up that institution to, to give you the endorsement. Right? Now tell me, your prophet and the sahabas, which university did they attend? Who gave them doc doctorate or certificate? Who made them graduate of which university? The, the prophet and the khalifas, the so-called khalifas you keep talking about in your hadith books, or which university did they attend? And tell me, did the prophet ever build a university called University of Islam or somewhere? Where? Who built it? Who? University of what? Islam? Where? Yeah. Prophet built that for you? Where? Now, you listen to these people, you don't use your logic. You don't critically listen to them to, uh, to ask. There are necessarily questions so that you can see the loopholes in these people understand. You don't do that. And when they talk, you just love the charisma and the amazement that they hold. Wow, mashallah, Yasir Kadi. I love listening to Yasir. Uh, the other day, somebody was telling me he love he loves listening to Yas uh, Yas uh, Khalid Khalid Yasin Khalid Yasin. 
He said, I love the guy, mashallah. I said, really, you love him? What did you, what did you, what do you love about him? Right. What, what do you love about him? He said, I love the way he talks. Uh, okay. I said, mention one preachment from him or sermon from him that you have something tangible to stand upon to love him. Give me one. The person has no idea what to tell me. He doesn't have anything to say. So you love Khalid Yassin. For what? For what? Well, that is just what we have today with people. Right? Not using critical thinking. Okay. So by the way, I want to play some two videos from these guys. They are from UK. So for those based in UK, you probably know them from this, uh, the Hyde Park uh, in UK. They have a park called Hyde Park. Uh, the speaker's corner, right? So I'm, I'm playing two people from this speaker's corner. You know them. For those based in UK, you probably know them. I'm going to play their videos. And I'm we are going to contemplate on what this guy said. One of them is Muhammad Ali. And the other one is Shams, Shamsi. Uh, you know Shamsi, right? So one is Muhammad Ali, who is the, he's called the Muslim Lantin or something. I'll play a video for him. Listen to him carefully. Carefully. And see what you are missing when you, you fail to listen to these people with critical ears. Uh, you, you, you have to descend to what they are saying critically because there's, there's a missing point in what they are telling you, right? Okay. So listen to this guy. Quran is from God or not? So I don't care about what the apocrypha says. I don't care what the Bible says. I look at the Quran as a scripture on its own. Does it have evidence? Why do I need to look at the Quran in the lens of apocrypha or what, what the Bible says? To me, that's ridiculous. I look at it as its own scripture. The Quran is not saying to you, go research the Torah and the gospel and, and the Old Testament and the, the Bible and apocrypha and then come believe in me. Quran is saying, this is the book from God. Believe in this book. Take the book as it is. This book is sufficient for you. So that's what we're saying. We look at the Quran the way it is. We don't have this twisted idea that we need to prove the Quran through previous scriptures that existed. So for me, just because history records these things, it's just more evidence that these things happen. But why do I believe they happen? It's because I have independent evidence that the Quran is from God. I don't need to look at the Bible to begin. The Bible is useless for me. I'm not okay. from any offensive point of view. I'm saying from a Muslim point of view. Okay. So you heard what this, this guy said. It's called Muhammad Ali. Uh, that is the Muslim lan lantern, right? Uh -huh. You listen to him carefully. I'm, now we are going to cross-check what he said, step by step. And I'm going to show you the contradictions in what these people say. These people you listen to, you think they are famous. So you listen to them, you love them. MashaAllah, he knows how to recite the Quran. He even said the Bible is useless. He said it. The Bible is useless. But these same bozos, when they are debating with Christians, they will quote references from Bible again. After saying the Bible is useless. If you say something is useless, no need to use it anymore. You understand? He's calling himself Muslim Lantin. He's like being mush the Mushrik Lantin. That I agree. Muslim Lantin, he doesn't deserve that. Sitting in front. <laughs> so now let's see the comedy. Right? Let's see the comedy. How hypocritical these people are. So if you're based in the UK, kindly share it. Let him see it. I would love to have a dialogue with this guy. One on one. Right? Okay, so now listen to the point. Um, whether the Quran is from God or not. The, the main point, based on the context of discussion, the this video, whether the Quran is from God or not. So I don't care about what the Apocrypha says. I he doesn't care what the Apocrypha says, right? Any other book, any other book will say about the Quran. He doesn't care. Listen, he doesn't care what Apocrypha says. He's going to base his argument. Listen carefully. I don't care what the Bible says. I look he doesn't also care what the Bible says about the Quran. He doesn't care. Look at the Quran as a scripture on its own. So I have to look at the Quran as a scripture on its own. Listen carefully. L listen to the English he's using. When you are listening to these people, I want you to critically listen to them. You listen to them as if you're trying to catch a criminal. Look, me, this is me, Baba Shrai. People who are closer to me will tell you about me. I love listening to people, lost scholars, or videos of these so-called people. I love listening to them because I can see the lies like, like this. Chump, 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 chump. I can see it. And this is why when you tell, when you mention my name to them, they are scared to come out for a dialogue one-on-one. -on -one. I'm serious because I'll set them up as scapegoats. I'm using your, that's why I'm called the correction officer. I'm using your own words against you. Yes, that's what I do to them. So kindly share, let these people see themselves, right? 
You heard what he said, right? Okay, he has to use the Quran, the scripture on its own, to prove itself. Okay, so listen. Does it have evidence? Why do I need to look at the Quran in the lens of Apocrypha or what? So he says, why does he have to look at the Quran in the lens of Apocrypha? So meaning any other book. Why does he have to look at the Quran in the lens of another book? Okay, listen. What the Bible says. To me, that's Or what the Bible says. He doesn't have to do that. Huh? Okay. Ridiculous. I look at it as its own scripture. So he looks at the Quran uh, as its own scripture. He has to look at the Quran. He never, listen, consistency, he never mentioned hadith throughout this statement. He never mentioned hadith. So he's listening carefully. The Quran is not saying to you, go research the Torah and the gospel. The Quran is not telling you, go and research the Torah and the gospel. The Quran didn't say that to you. So listen. And, and the Old Testament and and the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Quran is not telling you to go and do that. The, the Bible and uh, the Bible and then he forgot the the same Quran didn't do the same for the Hadith. He never said go to Sahih Al Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, or anything. The Quran never told you that. Apocrypha and then come believe in me. Apocrypha and then come and believe in him. The Quran also didn't tell you go to the Hadith before you come and believe in him. Just like how to their foolishness, they will tell you, tell me how did the Quran reach you? No, it reached me by DHL and FedEx and UPS, dumbass. That, that when, when they ask that question, in my head, I'm like, this guy, is he okay? <laughs> How did the Quran reach me? It's DHL, FedEx, UPS, SIPO. What do you want me to say? Eh? <laughs> what a foolish question they keep asking. How did the Quran get to you? What? <laughs> what is wrong with these people? Okay. Quran is saying, this is the book from God. Believe in this book. Take the book as it is. This book is sufficient for you. So that's what we're saying. We Did you hear what I said? Ladies and gentlemen, you are missing something. I'm playing that part again. Listen to what he said. From God, believe in this book. Take the book as it is. This book. God, believe. Apocryphan didn't come believe in me. Quran is saying this. Now listen, he's going to say exactly what we are going to catch him with. He says the Quran is saying. This is the book from God. This is the book from God. We, those who say the Quran alone is sufficient, we say this is the book from God. We agree. But believe in this book. Believe in it. God says we should believe. I believe. Take the book as it is. Take the book as it is. We do. This book is sufficient for you. This book is sufficient for you. Yes, we agree. So that's what we're saying. We look. Now he says that's what we are saying. You see the mushrik, the bozo, the hypocrites, munafik, that guy, Muhammad Ali. Inshallah, we'll be going to Hyde Park. You see. <laughs> These people, eh? Don't worry. Baba Shai will get you at the right time. Inshallah. You take his heart as it is. This video, I'll play it to you, Muhammad Ali, for in case God willing, I come to Hyde Park. I will look for you also. And I will look for your Muhammad hijab or whatever. All of you, I will look for you. You see, I have your videos. I'll play back to you. And I will ask you questions on that. This is what you told this Rob. Huh? Huh? Sentinel apologetics. You, that's what you told him. You take, his, you take it as it is. That's hypocritical. Huh? Muhammad Ali, that's hypocritical of you. One thing I like about him is he talks in a fast pace. So when people talk in a fast pace, pace, if you don't descend carefully, you miss a point. I'm serious. Hmm? Uh -huh. Okay, so let's continue. Look at the Quran the way it is. We don't have... So look at the Quran the way it is. I have this twisted idea that we need to prove the Quran through previous scriptures that existed. So he says we don't have anything to prove the Quran through previous scriptures. Okay. So for me, just because history records these things, it's just more evidence that these things happen. But why do I believe they happen? It's because I have independent evidence that the Quran is from. He has independent evidence. Listen, he has independent evidence that the Quran is from God. The Look, he has independent evidence that the Quran is from God. So listen. 
I don't need to look at the Bible to begin. I, Bible is used. He says he doesn't need to look at the Bible to begin with. And he says Bible is useless. Right? So he's going to correct his statement. I'm not okay. from any offensive point of view. I'm saying from... From any offensive point of view. What? A Muslim point of view. From a Muslim point of view. That's an insult. You just insulted Christians. And then you are saying from a Muslim point of view. So this is what Muslims actually think. That the Bible is useless. Then why do you quote the Bible for the Christians? Why do you go to the Bible to quote a reference to justify your, your issues? Coming back to the Quran. To say, oh, the Quran confirms this. The Quran confirms. Why do you go to the Bible to do that? The Bible is useless. Now, this is how hypocrite sounds. And I'm helping you to understand how the hypocritical people you are listening to, you think they are scholars. They are not. They are good at lying. Huh? Uh -huh. So this is uh, Muhammad Ali. You know him. The, the Muslim land. The Mushrik landing. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Mushrik landing. That's him. Okay. Now, let's go to Shamsi. Uh, Shamsi is another comedian. I watch his videos. I laugh a lot, right? I, I just like to laugh when I watch Shamsi. But let's listen to what Shamsi is telling another. He's talking to a Shia person, somebody who is a sheet, right? Somebody who is a sheet. So they were talking in Arabic language. And I'll break it down for you what he said concerning what he was asking the guy. Uh, concerning al bayt So listen to Shamsi. Even though he was speaking Arabic, I'll let you know what he said, right? Okay. تفضل <تصفيق> أنا أوافق بالرأي هذا ماكو بس أبي أسألك آه سؤال واحد الله أكبر والله آه دقيقة 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 Okay, now I'm going to go in the video to tell you what the argument was. If you read even the, the title, you see Shia admits that there is no ayat in the Quran that explicitly says to obey the al bayt or to follow al bayt Now, what Shamsi was trying to ask this person, uh, based on the person's belief, he wanted to, he's asking the person to bring him a proof from the Quran, just one verse from the Quran where it says, they should follow Al al -Bayt. So listen. As Ultak, kill Ashla Job. So he asked the question a question that who are, which, which are you, who, who are you following? Is it Al al -Bayt or Ansar? Then the person is telling him who they follow. Now listen, the person just answered who they follow. Then the person say, we are following Muhammad and the family of Muhammad. So now Shamsi is saying, now bring me a verse from the book of God where it says you should follow al bayt The irony, the irony. Is it not the same argument we use against Sunnis, Shias, you may name them. Is it not the same argument we are using? I say, bring me a verse where God says so, so, and so. Bring me a verse. Then they start calling you Qurani Yun, Quranist. Why do you need proof from the Quran? Is Quran alone the evidence? Because if even the guy he's asking that bring me a verse, the guy has evidence from other books. He can bring evidence from other books, which shows they should follow the al bayt Yes. She has, they have the evidence. But the point is, you are saying he should bring it from the Quran, the book of God. So which means, hypocritically, these people know the book of God is superior. And that is where we have to base our argument. Right? Okay, listen. Huh? 
يعطيني now he's telling the the Shia person the sheet that bring me one verse listen آية واضحة bring me one verse في كتاب الله in the book of God or from the book of God تقول اتبع أهل بيت which says you should follow Ali al Bayt. This is what Shamsi was telling the guy. Now listen, how Shamsi got excited from this question and how he starts stopping the person not to say any other thing because any other thing the person will say is useless since the evidence is not based in the book. So listen to the answer. Mark. So the, be the person said, no, I don't have. It's not, there's none. He cannot bring any evidence to show that God in his book says they should follow Alan Bait. He doesn't have the evidence. So now you see how he became excited. Shamsi got excited. You see, but let somebody who uses the Quran for guidance alone. Do the same thing. This person will say, No, you see the Quran, you hadith rejectors, hadith rejectors, they only base the evidence on the book of God. This is the irony, the hypocrisy. These are the people you are excited with on social media, and you think they are knowledgeable, right? Don't worry, correctional officer is growing gradually. I will meet you all, inshallah. You heard about the guy, World Dawa. I had a video on correctional officers then. There's a guy from World Dawa who came on my program and he acted like he didn't know me. And after I put him in a tight corner, he says he's follow so following the Salaf. After I put him in the tight corner, then he says, Baba Shraib, you think I don't know you? We, I know you. Oh, so you know me. You people are pretending you never heard of me. You pretend you never seen me. You heard of me and you are keeping mute because you are scared the audience will know me. And when they know me, Oti, oti talk. Mm, Yoruba people from Nigeria will say oti talk. That is done. And don't worry, I'm growing gradually. I will meet all of you face to face. We will find out. You see? You see how excited he is? He's telling the guy, finally, this you being a Shia, you don't have any evidence from the Quran, Kitabullah, Book of God, which says you should follow Halil Bayt. So in this time, why didn't Shamsi base his argument on the Quran and Sunnah or Quran and Hadith, as they usually do? Why didn't you do that? Because he knows the Shia, the Shi'it person can answer that can bring him evidence from another source. But you base it on the book of God. That's hypocritical of you, Shamsi. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, the reason why I'm playing this video, in case Shamsi gets to watch it, he will see himself how hypocritical they are. Now, I'm showing you these videos also for you, the audience, who are actually taking up the Quran for guidance to have to know the strategies these people use in their arguments. Save this video. Trim these videos. Put it down for yourself. Use it against them. I'm serious. Don't let such videos go scot-free. These people are in the mainstream. They use words. They use words. They manipulate you with words every day. They twist words out of context. So when you get their videos, use their videos against them and let them answer it for themselves. And you will see how they start stammering. They will start, uh, um, 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 but, but um, you know, uh, that's what they do. You see? Okay. Now, away with Shams. Now, the reason why I played the first video from Shams, Shams Ad-Duha, who is talking about the critical thinking, to use logic, right? The problem with people in religion, especially Islam, is people lack common sense and logic and reasoning. So they are only focused on 
a person who is leading them, his charisma, his knowledge, does it. What he says, fine. They don't cross-check. They don't examine. They don't listen carefully. They don't examine critically in order to find the lapses. They just listen. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So like I say, you can be listening to Baba Shrike. But it doesn't mean you agree with me in everything 100%. Because some things, it will take you time to understand. Let me tell you one secret about knowledge. When you are trying to comprehend something. You can be in the same class with another student. But he's smarter than you. He has a better IQ than you. He can understand things in the fast pace than you. You might understand the same thing, but in a slow pace. He might understand something in three months. You might understand it in one month. This is how life, this is how intelligence works. Some things can make sense to somebody already. You, it might not make sense to you at that moment. So what you need is time to study, to reflect. Time. You only need time to reflect. I one time had somebody who, who, when I was saying there is no five salat in the Quran, this person became uh, like, like an antagonist against, against me. He shared... He shared my profile and started telling people this guy is this, you know, tagging me as this guy is a liar. This, and he is trying to say there's five salat. When he went around a lot around the world, he had really later realized there's no five salat in the Quran. So he came back and I saw him acknowledging my one of my videos and he actually apologized and he wrote a statement that brother, I actually, I actually apologize to you because back then I misunderstood your point and I, 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 I took you for an enemy or so. You don't just have enmity with somebody just because you, you, you don't agree with some issues. No. My sole core of guidance is the Quran. Whatever I practice is from the Quran. I'm not telling you go outside the Quran for this guidance. So if you have a different understanding from mine, it doesn't mean we should hate each other just because you have a different understanding. It's about perspective. But maybe with time, you get to understand my point as well. Because you are only, you only had one point to understand at your given time. So when you get to understand my point later, it will all make sense to you. You don't rush into understanding. Hey, Avram Bimush, common sense, I see you. Uh -huh. You don't get to understand something all of a sudden just because somebody is speaking about it. Sometimes it can take you one year to understand a simple concept. And some other times, it will just take you one week. With a blink of an eye, you study, you reflect, and you know. Look, when I was in school, back, back in school, uh, during my times in Ghana, I remember when I was in GSS, uh, we were being taught uh, about is it about decim decimals decimals right you know how you write numbers and you put dots and then you round the number and then you get decimals back in school i was able to pass some of the questions i was asked in decimals but guess what decimals only made sense to me later on in life later on in life when i even came to europe and it started making sense to me. Back then, I only try my best to answer the questions. And, but it doesn't mean I really deeply understood the concept. If you get what I mean. Sometimes you can answer some certain things. It doesn't mean you really, really understand it. It's just because you've been taught and you took it like a sheep. And then you answer it straightforward like that. But it doesn't mean you actually scrutinize the thing to, to grasp the thing in your head. There's a difference. When you study something critically, even if you leave school, that thing is here. Even if you left school, it will be here. But when you study it superficially, after school, it's gone. You forget. Even though you pass the exams, you forget. So a lot of people, before they go to exam, they study in order to pass exam. They didn't study it so that the thing will live with them. No. They study to pass exams, and after exams, it's gone. They don't remember again. Do you understand? So that is why a lot of parents, when their children bring them assignment from schools, the, 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 school, the parents are in limbo. You're confused. You'll be checking your, your child's homework as if you have never done it before in your life. You're confused. You're like, oh, equation? Uh, decimals? Uh, fraction? What, what is it? You have no idea. 
but you studied it in school. But the reason why you didn't pay attention because superficially you only studied it to pass your exams and go. That's it. You didn't study it critically in order for it to stick to your brain. So that is why when people study something critically, it doesn't leave them, no matter how old they grow, because you've studied it thoroughly and critically. You know, uh, in Ghana, in the schools, there's something we call mental. For people who are, who are based in primary schools and uh, uh, junior high schools, this is something which is very popular among, uh, among the Ghana schools, right? And they teach you what we call multiplication table. This multiplication table, we have two times two, uh, two times one, two, 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 four, two, three, six, two, four, eight, two, five, ten. It goes like that. Huh? Two, six, twelve, two, seven, fourteen, two. Then it goes. Huh? Now, this thing, because we have studied it by heart, huh? you can... One day I was in the shower, I was doing it. I was in the shower, just in Finland here. I was in the shower, I was doing this thing in my head because I, I just remembered when I was in school. And guess what? This thing was taught in the primary school. Primary school. Imagine how many years ago. So many years ago. But I have it in my mind and I was singing it whilst I was in the shower. Why is that? Because I studied it totally. Do you see the difference? So when you are studying something, don't just study it superficially. Study it critically. When you study it critically, it sticks to your head. And you can hardly forget it. Do you see my point? So same goes with the notion of your faith. When you are studying anything about your faith, it doesn't mean just because the Quran says it, so you see it and you believe it. No, that's not how it works. Try to understand it first. What did God tell you in Quran chapter 17, verse 38? Uh, 36, sorry. Chapter 17, verse 36. It says, do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. Indeed, the hearing, the eyesight, and the mind, all those will be held accountable thereof. So because God gave you these faculties for a reason. He didn't give you so that you become a sheep. Just because you see a handsome person like Mufti Meng talking about Islam, you say, MashaAllah, because he speaks Arabic. You think God is an Arabian? Are you a fool? Huh? So how come you, play, you pray in your own language and God can answer you? Was Abraham an Arab? Huh? Was Abraham an Arab? An Arabian? So how come God listened to him? Was Moses an Arabian? So why, why will you let some foolish scholars tell you you have to pray in Arabic language before God will listen to you? Huh? Uh, the other day I was just with a brother and we were talking and he says, oh, he says, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I said, Jesus Christ of Nazareth? He says, yeah. And I said, why not Jesus Christ of Nigeria? He started laughing. He's like, no. <laughs> and I said, so you, you left Nigeria and you are talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nigeria, you don't have your Jesus. You I was only, of course, I was joking with him, but this is the point because subconsciously, people are, are doing things subconsciously without actually knowing what they are doing. They are just saying it. Yeah. Like I saw somebody say, Oh, shit, mother of God. I was like, what, what? Mother of who? Is you mother of God? I'm like, Are you okay? Mother of God? <laughs> People are drunk, I'm serious, in the head, saying things meaningless, nonsensical. Do you, you understand? Uh, this is how confused people, religion have made people to become, right? People are following religion like sheep, no critical thinking, no common sense, no logic. Out of the equation, by when you are a politician, you are using logic. But the same politician who is using logic in, in politics, when it comes to religion, he's dumb. He's a fool. Why? Why? Why is the logic missing in religion? Where did you put it? That is why the Hadith books, uh, Sahih Muslim 3600, will tell you to breastfeed an adult. He's telling the wife of somebody to breastfeed an adult. Is it pornography? But because people fail to use their reasoning, they will say, yeah, mashallah, we believe. The Prophet said, mashallah. So that is what Yasir Qadi said. That's the video. Let me play the video. Listen to what he said. Whatever Allah says, whatever the Prophet says, we believe in it and we affirm it without thinking too deeply about, this, uh, about the actuality of this action. I think that's just dumb. <laughs> you 
you hear what Yasir Qadi said. Whatever God says, whatever the prophet says, we just believe in it without thinking deeply about it. So they just take it. And then you saw Abu Layth at the end. He says, that is just dumb. It is dumb. Seriously, it is dumb. Why? You, you just believe it without thinking too deeply about it. What's wrong with your logic? Do you understand? So this is how scientists, world leaders have studied the people. And they know a lot of people are sheep. So they just tell you things. Look at the issue of vaccine. Huh? The corona vaccine. They make you take four times, four doses. They started with the first jab, the second jab, third jab. Four jab, and after all, they tell you this is this is not effective. Even if you have four jabs, you can still get corona. What is the now? What is the tell me what's the benefit? I'm taking a jab to avoid me from a sickness, and at the end of the day, I'll still get the sickness. And they say, Oh, it will not kill you, but yet people who took corona vaccine died. So, this is how people are, don't have the critical thinking ability to question things, to examine things critically before doing it. They just follow what they don't have knowledge. And God is telling you out of the infinite wisdom he has given us. In Quran chapter 17, verse 30, says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. But what do you see people doing? They will follow like a sheep. Awuchi. That's what they do. Uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, I've done almost, I'm going to one hour, 30 minutes. So let's do the, the questions and answers for people who have asked questions. Let's answer the questions. And I'm putting the phone number for people who can call to ask their questions. The number is on the screen. For those on TikTok, it's against the rules. I cannot put my phone number on the, on TikTok. It's against the community guidelines. So for those on Facebook, on YouTube, that is my number on the page, right? As uh, 0035846680 You can call via WhatsApp and ask your question, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So let me see what, what I've missed. <clears throat> uh, uh, Abdul Karim says, watching from live from Tamale. Yeah, thank you. Yes, for my, uh, you know, for those who watch me from Tamale, I appreciate that your support is amazing. I uh, like the support. So far, people are waking up from the northern part of Ghana. I appreciate your efforts to, to understand the truth and follow the truth. Your support is, you know, uh, amazing, right? So keep up with the, with the, with the, with acknowledging the truth. And I want you to actually study, use your rationale, use your logic, and follow the truth, right? Don't just follow just because you see. No, follow because you understand what you're following. I appreciate the support. Uh, LV says, let's make Baba Shrive famous. It's not, it's not necessarily that uh, I won't say I'm I'm actually looking for fame. There's a difference. It's not the fame I'm looking for. No. What I'm looking for is an audience who can critically think and resonate with what I say. Not just famous. Because if I'm famous, it you can have a bunch of fools following you when you're famous. Right, just like people follow celebrities like footballers and some musicians, and so you know, you can have foolish people even making you famous. But I'm talking about the atten I need the attention of intelligent people. I don't, I, this is why when you check on my bio, on my profile, the bio, I only said I only lecture the intelligent people to the truth in religion. That's that's what I'm doing. So, what work with me if you are intelligent? That's all I need. So, I don't need just people to make me famous, it's not the fame I need. <laughs> Because having fame is a burden. Yeah, yeah. You don't have freedom to do a lot of things when you are famous, right? You like you, you'll be in the mess. Right? Uh-huh. So Mohammed Ashari, I see you. Uh, let me go back to some questions I was asked earlier, right? Uh LV says, I wanted to ask when is it obligatory for children to start praying? Start praying. <laughs> In the Quran, there is no specific age stated that at this age, the child should start. However, if you take the age of puberty, right? Puberty, Quran chapter 24, verse 58 to 59, it tells you about puberty, right? And how the, these children should ask for permission till they attain puberty. 
Now, it clearly shows you from pubert from the age of puberty, kids uh, or the youth become clear conscious. And they can differentiate between wrong and right, and they can take responsibility for certain things. The age of puberty, right? So when we say the age of puberty, the time of life when sex glands become functional. Now, the moment the sex, sex glands of a, a child start becoming, you know, uh, functional, the kids or the child's thought pattern changes, right? And they start to understand reasons why they are having these organs and, you know, and then the, the ladies who start having menstruation and so on. So then they start to understand the purpose of life as well, right? But in the Quran, you will never see a direct verse say that when a kid gets seven years, six years, five years, they should start. No. Some kids, they mature faster in the head. I'm talking about the brain. Their senses, they get to understand things faster than other kids. Right, so it doesn't necessarily mean so God never made it mandatory where he says seven years, six years a kids to start praying or the no, no, it depends on your child. If they want to do it, let them do it, but they have to understand what they are doing, and that's why God says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So it tells you that if your child doesn't understand what he or she is practicing, don't force them. Wait till they have they are open-minded, they are willing to ask you questions to know the reasons why they have to pray. Then you tell them. Right, my daughter. I told her when she's going to sleep, she should say, "I want to be lahi mina She says she should seek refuge with God, huh? and then she will say, "Bismillah" in the name of God. Right before she sleeps. So one day she asked me. She said, "Baba, what if I forget to say it? What will happen?" And I said, "Well, I don't pray anything bad will happen to you, but I just hope that when you pray, God listen to you, and then He will protect you. That's all. But if you forget, that's forgetfulness. It can happen." You understand? But no need to forget. Try to keep up so that God will protect you. Right? So she asked me, is God watching? And I say, yes, he's watching you, but you don't see him. Right? That's how it goes. So now you see, something triggered her senses to ask me these questions. So she's not like a sheep, just following what I said. No, she questioned me. So you have to find tangible reasons and answers to give to your children so that they can understand what, why they do things. So at that point and time if they are willing to pray fine they are willing to pray it because they understand why the prayer what the prayer is for you get my point uh -huh. now second question uh emily says please baba can you explain quran chapter 2 verse 115 and quran chapter 2 verse 144 for us quran chapter 2 verse 115 let me put it on the screen I share Quran chapter 2, verse 115. It says, To God belongs the east and the west. So wherever you turn, there is the countenance of God. Indeed, God is encompassing and omniscient. Now, when you check the verse above, 114, chapter 2, verse 114, it says, And who is more unjust than one who prevents the mosques, that's the masjids of God, from mentioning his name therein and strives in their room those it is not for them to enter them to enter the mosque right except in fear for them is disgrace in the world and they will have a terrible punishment in the hereafter now when you go to 150 then it says and to god belongs the east and the west so wherever you turn there is the countenance of god indeed god is encompassing and omniscient so Based on Quran chapter 2, verse 115, if you are looking for God, wherever you turn, whether east and west, God is there. So God is not in a specific location you can say, oh, I have to only face the east to find God. No. No such thing in the Quran where God says, only face this direction to call me. No. If you are looking for God, you can face anywhere. Wherever you turn, God is there. Then we go to 144. In 144, Surah to Baqarah, Sorry. Quran chapter 2 verse 144. I do have videos explaining this, this point. However, you find it on my YouTube channel, right? Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 2 verse 144. We, God says, we have seen your face turning around toward the sky. So we have entrusted to you a place of worship, which is the Qibla. It's a place of worship, right? With which you will be pleased. So turn your face towards the what? the masjid al-haram the sacred mosque 
And wherever you may be, he's talking to the believers at the time of the prophet, right? Uh -huh. Because it's based on the context. If you start from 143, the context is there. Thus, turn your faces towards it. Towards what? The Masjid al-Haram. So that those who were given the book will know that it is the truth from their Lord. And God is not heedless of what they do. So God is not heedless of what they do. Now, when you continue the context to 145, and God says, and whether you bring every sign to those who were given the book, they will not follow your place of worship. That is your kibla of you, the prophet. Neither shall you be a follower of their place of worship. Nor will they be followers of each other's place of worship. And if you follow their inclinations after what has come to you of the knowledge, indeed, you in that case will be among the transgressors. You continue 146. Those to whom we gave the book recognize it as they recognize their children. Yeah. But indeed, a group among them are concealing the truth while they know. 147. The truth is from your Lord, so do not be among the doubters. 148. And to each is a direction which it should tend to. So compete in good deeds wherever you may be. God will bring you forth altogether. Indeed, God is capable of all this. 149. And from wherever you go forth, thus turn your face towards the sacred masjid. For indeed, it is the truth from your Lord, and God is not heedless of what you do. You can see, nowhere does it mention prayer or salat. Okay. And from wherever you go, then turn your face towards the sacred mosque. And wherever you may be, is still talking in the context to the prophets and the believers at that time. Then turn your faces towards it so that there will be there will not be any argument for the people against you except those who transgress among them. So do not fear them, but fear me, so that I may complete my blessing upon you and perhaps you will be guided. You see. Now, the verses I just read there is no mention of salat, no prayer there, no salat there. But when sectarians take chapter 2, verse 144, they will bring the understanding that, oh, this is where God says you should pray facing. And they, first of all, they will say Kaaba. Kaaba is not mentioned in Quran chapter 2, verse 144. No Kaaba there. And God never asks you to pray facing Kaaba or Majid al Haram because Majid itself is used for calling on the name uh, God. To commemorate God. So why will you leave the masjid and then you are standing outside of it and facing it? Does it make sense? Masjid is meant for calling God. So now, this masjid you are supposed to call God, you left it and you are facing it. Does it make sense to you? Hello? He says, please, Baba, according to Quran, all messengers are dead and gone. But they say Jesus is not dead and will come back. Please explain. Jesus is not coming back. He's dead and gone. I have a video on it, right? Uh -huh. I don't want to spend too much time explaining the same thing. I have a video. I have a video on that. Uh, Emily, remind me. I'll, I'll share the video. I have it on my YouTube channel. It says they killed Jesus and he is not coming back. That's what I wrote on the title. So watch the video. The answer is there. <clears throat> uh, Khalil ibn Bilal says, Salam alaikum. Is there a certain way in which the Quran was revealed? And is it possible to find a Quran that is written in the way it was revealed? That's a good question. But let's check the answer. According to Quran chapter, chapter 35, verse 31 to verse 32. So let me share the screen and let's see the answer to the question the brother asked, right? Yeah. When you go to Quran chapter 35, verse 31 to 32, it says, and what we have inspired to you, Muhammad, of the book is the truth confirming what was before it. Indeed, God to his servant is cognizant and conversant. Verse 32, then we transmit the book to those who we have chosen among our servants. 
Then among them is one who wrongs himself, and among them is one who is careful. And among them is one who competes in good deeds by the permission of God. That is a great preference. Now, when you check in this verse, after God has inspired the book to Muhammad, confirming what was before it, this is what God says. Then we will cause the book to be inherited. Awrathna. This awrathna means to cause somebody to inherit. Huh? So God says, we will transmit the book or we will cause the book to be inherited uh, by those we have chosen among our servants. So the book he gave to the prophet by inspiration, God will cause the book to be inherited by other servants of his. So it doesn't necessarily mean the same coffee copy prophet Muhammad wrote with his hands. That is the same copy which will be transferred to somebody to also hold it. No. The prophet received the book by inspiration and revelation. The same God will cause the book to be inherited by other servants he has chosen, just like he chose the prophet to make him receive the book. So it doesn't necessarily mean the way the prophet wrote it on the paper is the same one we are going to take and inherit. That is not what the verse says, right? Uh, so based on the question the brother uh, was asking, uh, Khalil, uh, he says, is there a certain way in which the Quran was revealed? It was revealed based on inspiration and revelation, right? Then he says, and is it possible to find a Quran that is written in the way it was revealed? Do you see the point? No, we don't have it. Uh, Layola Yuzi says, Quran chapter 9 verse 31. Why is Allah putting himself and Jesus together? Why? It is the misunderstanding of how the verse has been arranged. So let me check. Chapter 9 verse 31. In Quran chapter 9 verse 31, it says they have taken their scholars and their monks as lords besides God. Do you see? Then this as well as, as, well as the Messiah, the son of Mary. So meaning, they have taken their scholars and their monks besides God. Now, the word wa, people are misunderstanding this wa, thinking that the wa is talking that God and the Messiah together. So there is a command here when you're translating it. Now remember, the Arbaban can be understood in Quran chapter 3 verse 64. So let me finish this verse, then we will check the reference which explains this verse to understand the context. They have taken their scholars and their monks as lords which God tells us not to do that. We shouldn't take anybody as Lord. So Mark chapter 3, verse 64, mark it down. We are going, we are going to check it. Besides God, there is comma, as well as the Messiah, the son of Mary, they do take him as a Lord. But they were only commanded to worship one God, not two, not three. So God is not telling you in the verse that the Messiah is also God. No, understand the grammar, the grammatical instance of the verse and then understand the structure of the choice of words being used. <laughs> there is no God except him. You, do you see the context here? Him, which is one God. He didn't say them or both of them. He didn't say whom are. He says him, who are. Glory be to him above what they associate. So now when you go to Quran chapter 3 verse 64, which will give you clarity. This Quran chapter 3 verse 64 is talking to the people of the book. And you know the people of the book, those who call themselves Jews, Christians, and so on. So now he says, say, all people of the book, let's come to equal terms between us and you that we shall not worship except God, Allah, one. Neither shall we associate anything with him, nor shall we take each other as lords. You see the word Arbaban, just as it's mentioned in Quran chapter 9 verse 31. The same word is mentioned again. Besides God. So you see the besides God there. So we are not supposed to take anybody. Not even Jesus. And Jesus said it himself in the Bible. Go to Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to verse 30. Jesus himself said, you only have one Lord. One. The Lord our God is one. But if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are Muslims. Submit us. So that is the understanding to the verse you asked me. Uh, since, uh Layola. Chapter 9, verse 31, right? <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
What am I missing here? Abdul Abbas says, Baba, is Salat al Wusta after Fajr or before? Is Salat al Wusta after Fajr or before? Salat al Wusta comes in the night, uh, midnight. When you check Quran chapter 73, verse 20, where it says, Inna Rabbaka ya'lamu anna katakumu adna bin thulthay layli wa disfahu wa thulthaw wa ta'ifatu min al lazina ma'ak. It tells you the timing of the night time where you get that. So it starts from the night. So Salatul Wusta comes before Fajr. It's in the middle of the night. It starts from the middle of the night. One third, two thirds, and then third of it. So when you are done, then Fajr Salat comes. So Salatul Wusta comes before Fajr. You start with Salatul Isha. So after Isha, then you have Wusta in the middle. From Wusta, then you have Fajr. After Fajr, no Salat again till uh, sunset. Yes, so that is the answer to your question. And let's go to the next question. Uh, I have 15 minutes more to, to end. Uh, Sister Fatima, no, Fatima Chin, no, no problem. You can watch later. You can re-watch the program. Uh, thank you very much, Abdul Samad. Uh, Evely Congoli says, I also had an important question. What do you think about mainstream mosque where shirk is involved? Does it have any relation with chapter 9, verse 108? It starts from 107. Chapter 9, verse 107 to 109. Yes, it has any, It has a relation with that. Right? Such a mosque, you have to avoid it. Uh, it clearly says it. You avoid such a mosque where there is division. Don't step there. Uh, it says in Quran chapter 9, verse 108, it says, Lata abada. Do not stand there in ever. A mosque established on piousness from the first day is more suitable to stand there in, wherein are men who love to purify themselves, and God loves those who purify. So avoid such a mosque when there's sectarianism, when there's a division. Avoid it. Uh, brother, your question is not clear. Can you uh, repeat your question? Uh, Tadi Doc Said, I didn't get your question. Right? Yes, you're welcome, uh, Layola. You're welcome. Uh, somebody says, have you heard of Benjamin Bilal? Yes, I've heard of him. Uh, Benjamin Bilal, uh, is this the guy who said, who, who coined the word, he says, lunatics? Right? He keeps speaking about, you know, how words come, come about, came about. And I've seen some of his videos here. Uh, let me check on TikTok. What am I missing? <laughs> yes, Sophie says, God has unlimited possibilities to be everywhere. Yes, he has to be. He has. If you go check Quran chapter 57 verse 4, he is with you wherever you may be. Wherever you are, he is with you, right? So he has that power. Somebody says God is not everywhere, even in toilet. Yes, he's with you. You have a soul in the toilet. <laughs> if God is not in the toilet, it means you can use a cheat code in the toilet. Eh? So God is not watching you in the toilet. What's wrong with your logic? God is with you everywhere you are. He gave you the soul. He blew the soul uh, into your body. So the soul is connected to God. He's with you. He knows what you are telling to you, whispering to yourself. So if you say God is not in the toilet, you, you, think, you are thinking that we are saying that God, God is going to sit there and is there sitting like this. Oh, come on. Use your logic. God is with you wherever you are. Quran chapter 57 verse 4. He says wherever you may be, he's with you. Unless if you are trying to fool yourself by not following what the verse says, then you think you can think like that. Uh, uh, Afalata Kilun is still asking me concerning the current war in Israel. Uh, he says, what did 
what does the Quran say about Israel's current war? What, what I want people to understand is the nation of Israel you are watching right now is a formulated state in the year 1948, right? It's a new country formed in the year 1948. It is not the Israel God is talking about in the Quran. The Israel God is talking about in the Quran is not a country. It is the children of Israel, Bani Israel, the children of Israel. It's like a, about the Asbat, the grandsons. It is about the clan. It's not about a country. So know the difference, right? Uh -huh. Now, there's a reason why I don't want to be speaking about those issues. Of course, they are killing if people, innocent people are dying. Nobody wants to hear that, right? And I'm not telling you I'm supporting Israel or Palestine. No. But of course, I hate injustice. Anywhere there is an injustice or oppression, I'm not in favor of that. And also, there has, lately there have been uh, earthquakes in Morocco uh, as well. And then there's an earthquake in Afghanistan. Nobody's talking about that. There's been two earthquakes in Afghanistan. This is, these are mostly, it can be natural disasters. And remember, the handwork of a human being can also play a role. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. So I don't usually want to talk about things. Things I'm not well endowed with, right? If the Quran mentions this, I'll talk about it. If the Quran hasn't mentioned, I don't, it's a no-go area for me. A lot of people are talking about it, or a lot of news stations are talking about it. So do your own investigation concerning that. Don't take sides just because they tell you Palestine is a Muslim country or Israel is this. No, don't take sides. You'll be unjust when you do that. But don't side with the oppressor. You understand you have to support the one who is being oppressed right to stand up for themselves but don't so don't take sides just because you, you tell you palestine is a muslim country oh i support palestine oh israel is a christian country or it's a jew country so i hate israel no don't do that don't take sides please you'll be unjust when you do that investigate quran chapter 49 verse 6 when an immoral brings you news or information, you have to investigate. Right? So that you don't strike people out of ignorance. Right? Uh -huh. So this is the current trend in the world now. Right? It's like somebody slapping you. When you retaliate, if people don't, don't see the starting of the slap, they might think you are the oppressor when you retaliate. So many a times, investigate before you take sides. It's not about, oh, this is a Muslim, this is a Christian. Take Follow the truth, not, not taking sides. Be side, side with the truth. Quran chapter 5. Quran chapter 5, verse 8. Oh, you who believe, be upright for God as witnesses in justice. And do not wrong yourselves by hating a people in order to act, uh, in, in order not to act just, justly. Act justly. It is nearer to piousness. And beware of God. Indeed, God is conversant with what you do. Right? Uh -huh. So you have to be upright for God as witness. As a witness, don't be, um, don't be biased. So again, when you go to Quran chapter 4, verse 135, it says what? Oh, you who believe, be upright in justice as witnesses for God, even if it is against yourselves or your parents, that is the parents and relatives, whether he is rich or needy, for God is more deserving to both of them. So do not follow inclination lest you counter-react. And if you distort or turn away, then indeed God is what conversant with what you do. So when it comes to bearing witness to an issue, don't side with somebody just because you think, oh, he's my brother. Oh, he's a Muslim. Oh, he's a Christian. No, don't do that. Be upright for God. Stand with the truth. Be just as a witness. Don't say, oh, because they are attacking Palestine, so I think they are Muslim. I support Palestine. No. Don't do that. Don't do that out of ignorance. Yes. Don't do that out of ignorance. Support the one who is being oppressed. Quran chapter 4 verse 97. This is what God says. Quran chapter 4 verse 97. Indeed, those the angels will cause their death in wronging their souls. They, the angels, will say, in what were you? They, the wrongdoers, will say, we were oppressed in the land. They, the angels, will say, 
Was the earth of God not spacious for you to emigrate therein? Does those are the ones whose refuge is hell, such an evil destiny? You see what God says. When you go to 98, accept the oppressed among men, women, and children who are not able to dodge, nor are they guided to a way. Those are the ones God will do that. Then those, God will perhaps pardon them. For God is pardoning and forgiving. So you see, in this context, you are not even supposed to pray and say, pray for Palestine. Oh, I'm praying for Palestine. May they... No, it's God's decision. This is what he just told you in the Quran. It's God to decide that. It's not you about your prayer. Oh, pray for Palestine. Oh, pray for Israel. No, it will not do anything. Don't fool yourselves. Check the Quran, what God is telling you. God says, Indeed, those the angels will cause their death in wronging their souls. They, the angels, will say to them, In what were you? What were you doing? They, the wrongdoers, will say, We were oppressed in the land. They, the angels, will say, Was the earth of God not spacious to emigrate therein? So if you are being oppressed in a particular land, according to God, there's space, spaces for you to move. That's, those are the ones whose refuge is held, such an evil destiny. Then it goes, 98, accept the oppressed. So with the exception of those who are oppressed among men, women, and children who are not able to dodge the war happening, who are not able to dodge what is happening. Nor are they guided to a way. God will that grant them exception. 99. Then those, this group, God will perhaps pardon them. So this is what God is telling you. So God is not saying pray for them. He is already aware of what is happening. Some people can be oppressed, but they are wrongdoers. You don't know about it. God knows about it. So you are not to take sides because you'll be unjust. We don't know the truth behind something. Yes. Of course, but you have to talk against the oppressor if you know. That is my point. So this is why sometimes, many times I make videos, you don't see me talking about political issues or issues, you understand, relative to what the Quran hasn't mentioned. I don't go there. I don't want to be biased. Right? God didn't create war. People create war for themselves. So use your logic wisely. Somebody says, so why will God, Allah create war that kills innocent people? Look at the foolish question. Was it God who created the war? It's people killing each other. When God wanted to create human beings, listen what the angels ask God. Quran chapter 2 verse 30. Listen to the question the angels ask God. And when your Lord said to the angels, I will place a successor on earth. They said, will you place there in one who will corrupt and shed blood therein, while we glorify with your praise and sanctify you? He, God said, indeed, I know what you do not know. Verse 31. And he taught Adam the names of them all, and then displayed them to the angels, and said, inform me of the names of these, if you should be truthful. They, the angels said, glory be to you, we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Illa ma allamtana. Huh? Indeed, you are the omniscient, the wise. He, God, said, O Adam, inform them of their names. And when he, Adam, informed them of their names, he, God, said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you conceal? 34. And when we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam, then the prostrator except Lucifer, that is Iblis, he refused and became arrogant and was of the disbelievers. So when God was placing a successor on earth, the angels asked God, will you place one who, what, corrupt on earth and shed blood? And God told them, I know what you do not know. It is the human being who creates, who, who invents evil by himself and the jinn. They cause evil. God didn't create the evil for you. You created it for yourself. But somebody will say, but how come God is not interfered? That's why there's a judgment day. He will judge those who are oppressors. 
if you are watching football there's 90 minutes of football when the match starts the referee plays uh whistles when it starts the 90 minutes has to end before the report will go back to fifa for fifa to interfere fifa does not need to interfere in the football match or uefa doesn't need to interfere the referee and you the players do your own thing you can you can even tackle somebody and get red card that's up to you that is why in this world those who support god must stand up for the truth when somebody is being oppressed you have to defend the oppressor and the one who is being oppressed then you attack the oppressor if i remember the verse uh is it 30 uh uh let me see if i remember the verse was it 35 okay let me try to remember the verse but i was be lying in shit that <laughs> Uh, 38, 45. I'm trying to remember a particular verse. I think, is it Quran chapter 22, verse 22, verse, is it 35? I forgot this verse. Uh, God willing, if I remember, I'll, I'll uh, there's a particular verse which just escaped my mind. Let me see. Just yeah. Uh, uh, I had a verse in mind. I just I just forgot the verse. There's something I wanted to talk about. I forgot the verse. But of course, when I when I remember, uh, let me see. Quran chapter 22 doesn't mention about fight, right? Uh, just a second. I wanted to mention a verse. I it just escaped my mind. But I was be like, uh, Quran chapter 22. Let me see. Yes, verse 39. I remember now. Verse 39. 22 verse 39. Yes, Quran chapter 22, verse 39. God says, permission has been given to those who are fighting because they were wronged. Indeed, God is able to grant them victory. Quran chapter 22, verse 39. Permission has been given to those who are fighting because they were wronged. Indeed, God is able to grant them victory. Right? So if someone has wronged you and you are fighting back, for the wrongdoing, God will grant you, he's able to grant you victory. Yes. Uh -huh. So God is supporting those who are defending themselves. Yes, he is there with them. Uh, Afalat Akili says, that the Quran mention signs of the hour? Yes, it does. One of them is mentioned in Quran chapter 27, verse 82. Uh, <clears throat> if you go to is it Quran chapter 47 yeah I made a file I made a file I'll, I'll, I'll have to I have to talk about this in my next lecture I have a file on it, but now is my time is up. Two hours. I don't want to go too much, right? Uh huh. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, two hours is enough. Uh, let me see. Look at what somebody is saying. It says there is beating women in Quran. So you want to beat women, and he says cutting off is in the Quran. We should apply it. Uh, Ashraf, what? Uh, Ashraf, can you call call and prove your point? 
He says, my wife, if she deserves it. Brother, that's not how you understand the Quran, please. Don't do that. Don't go and cut somebody's hand. <laughs> or don't go and beat somebody's daughter, please. Can you call? My number is there. Call, call. Let, let's, let me help you on this. Can you call right now? Ah, uh -huh, call, call. Let's deliberate on this. Somebody is trying to justify the beating of his wife and then cutting of the hands and say we should apply it. It doesn't go like that. Just because you see a verse in the Quran, you just go, hey, I have to do it. I have to cut somebody's hand. I have to beat my wife. Hey, really? Okay. Can you call? Call and, and then justify your point. Ladies and gentlemen, pardon me. I have to stay a bit for this point. So let this caller call. Thank you very much, uh, Blue. Assalamu alaikum, my friends. Yes, wa alaikum salam, brother. Uh, for the sake of the audience, uh, can you mention your name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is Ashraf. I am from Morocco. I reject Sunnah. I only believe in Quran. Uh, if you say you only believe in Quran, is that what God asks you to do? Uh, yes, in a... I believe in beating women in the Quran, but in a special case. Only. No, did you did you get my point? I said if you say you believe in the Quran alone, mm -hmm. is that the only book God says you should believe? Uh, the Quran in the previous scripture, but we gotta follow only the Quran and reject all the hadiths. Okay, I understand. I understand you. I, I just wanted you to correct that statement because you said believe. Believe we can believe in previous scriptures as well, but. When it comes to following, then we have to follow the Quran. Yes, I agree. But first of all, when you came, you said you believe in only the Quran. That's why I wanted you to correct that statement. Anyways, let's let's go to your point. You said you believe in beating of your wives. Yes. And what is your justification to that? It go, hun. that that's, that's just it. Because the Quran says, it Yes, uh, I, it's clear, my friend. It's Idribon. It's speed. No, what is what is clear about it? Because he says Idribon. So if 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 God says Yadribon lahuli amsalil nas, does it also also means uh, beat? God is beating the amsal. No, it doesn't. Uh, so how did the meaning change now? Uh, in the example you mentioned, it's metaphorical, but in that one, it's literal. Uh, so how did you know this is metaphorical and this is literal? How did you? How were you able to differentiate that? Like I cannot answer this this question to be honest. But, okay. Uh, okay. Let me let me help you out. You, according to you, you say God said we should beat women, right? Our wives, yes. Okay. With what or how did he say you should beat them? He didn't say anything about this. Do you remember that the Quran chapter 16 verse 89 says, Right? Okay. So the, the book is to serve as a clarification for all things. So now you said, God says we should beat women. If we should beat women. And I'm asking you how. And you said, it's not clarified. But God says the book is to serve as a clarification for all things. So how come we don't see how to beat women? In the Quran. Like you can't slap, you can't punch, you can't kick, something like this. Is is that what God said? No, but he just said beat them. And so how? how? So that means no, no, he didn't say how. Okay, it means the Quran the Quran didn't explain everything to us. That is your logic. I'm using your logic according to your understanding. No, he, 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 there is no need for Allah to explain how, because everyone knows how to beat. Okay, let me give an example. If I take you to Quran chapter 7, verse 160, I want you to help me, because you are from Morocco, so you should understand Arabic, right? So I want you to help me and the audience, right? If you mm -hmm. check Quran chapter 7, verse 160, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm highlighting a point. I want you to read the point. Only the point I highlight. Can you read it? Okay, I'm gonna take the Quran. Please, can you repeat with which, which chapter? But can you see it on the screen? Are you watching the screen? No, no, I'm not watching the screen. Maybe if I watch the screen, I will not be able to. Okay, Sorry. chapter seven, verse one hundred and sixty. Chapter seven. 
160. Surah Al-Araf. Surah Al-Araf, okay. Yes. 160. 160. 16. 16. Yeah, me at, me at then 16. Then. Me at 16, okay. Yeah. Uh, this one. Okay, start from wa wa awhayna. Start from wa awhayna. Wa awhayna ila Musa idis saskahu qawmuhu ni drabbi asaq al hajar. Then bash says min husna ta asaq. No, don't don't go further. Only only that point. Uh, bi asaq al hajar. Now, yes. did you see what he told Musa? Can you explain to me what he told Musa to do? To strike with, with the, his uh, his asa, the, the, the hajar. And he said he should strike what? The stone, right? Yes. So he told Musa to use his staff and use it to strike the stone. Yes. Do you see the clarity of the explanation he told Musa to do here? Is it very, yes. is it very clear? Okay, so now if you say he said we should beat women, if that is your understanding, I'm not saying you are wrong, I'm not saying you are right. But I'm saying, if that is your understanding, how come God didn't say, if we are going to beat women, we should beat them with something? Or this is how we should beat them? Just like he gave us clarity concerning Musa to use his stick to hit the stone, to use his staff to hit the stone, so that water will come forth. So how come God didn't say something like that concerning beating women? He just uh, didn't. He just didn't. So then how are we supposed to find the right answer to the issue? If you just said, so we should beat them. How? Uh, like I have, uh, I can explain, like uh, I'm saying that beating women is only in a special case. And I can't explain it from that verse. But, you know. but uh, wait, wait, wait. If you say in a special case, where did you get this? Is, the, what, is that what God said? That in special cases, we should beat women? I can explain. Okay, explain. Help me. Okay. So uh, you understand Arabic very well. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, go go to that verse when begin from Fasalihat. Okay? Fasalihat qanitatun hafidatun lil ghaybi bima hafid Allah. Yes, I can here see it. Have, it's on the screen, yes. Uh-huh. Here, here we have three traits of a good woman. It's okay. To be righteous, to be obedient, and to uh, to not reveal the secrets. To be like uh, hafid lil ghaybi. Right? Okay. So uh, what I'm saying is the reason Allah mentioned the three traits of women and he gave us three ways of dealing with women, with women is because every single way of dealing with women has to do with one trait. Like, for example, for salihat, if your wife is not righteous anymore, what you're going to do is <coughs> You understand? Is If she's not obedient, uh, if she starts revealing her, your secrets, beat her. Okay, so let's let's take it one by one. He says, Wallati takhafuna nushuzahunna. What does he mean? Wallati takhafuna nushuzahunna. What does he mean? Like uh, non obedience or deviation or something like this. No, he's telling he is telling the men about the women. He says something. Wallati is talking about lati is for women, just like when we say wallazina is for men. But wallati takhafuna nushuzahunna. Those whom you fear, they are what? They are discord. Nushuz. You know, they are, you know, agree arguments and other, you know, uh, uh how they argue or they become uh, you know. They, they uh, have a I discord with you. Too, okay. Like, uh, then let, let's go because I don't have much time because I'm ended. So it's because of you I stayed a bit. But let's let's go to the point. Then he says, Faizu Hunna. So now you should admonish them. You give them advice, right? Faizu Hunna. So from, from somebody who you fear their discord, number one, God says, advise them. Or you have to give them a sermon, give them admonishment. Then from advising them, you went to Wajuru Hunna Filmadaji. Then you have to abandon them in the bed. Yes. So abandoning a lady, a woman from the bed, after advising her, if she doesn't listen, you abandon her from the bed. The third one, then he says, Wadribu Hunna. 
then automatically you took you took it literally before you translate this do you understand that the quran some things are literal and some things are non-literal yes okay so how come you took this verse literally because uh, i used to take it in, in, in a metaphorical way but there was no tomanina in my heart about this and uh, after reading it and reading it over and over again i came to the conclusion that it gotta be literal because if it's not literal it's gotta be like but the verse say like her. but let me let me help you out please don't try to understand the arabic of the quran according to what they teach you in fusha or msc or whatever quranic arabic is lisanun arabiyun mubin it's different from the arabic language you know as a moroccan or as an Egyptian, or as a Saudi Arabian, or Iraqi, or whatever you are. Try to understand that. There's a big difference. Okay. So it doesn't use your grammar, your ihrab. The ihrab or nahu that you know is different from the Quran. Okay. Do you get my point? Now, yes. let me give you an example. If you say we should beat them, and you couldn't tell us how we should beat them, which means God didn't tell us how we should beat the women, right? Okay, no problem. But God says, for in ata'anakum, uh, ata'anakum, uh, ata'anakum, fala tabugu alayhinna sabila. Now, if they should obey you, do not seek a means against them. Why do you think God used this statement? If about beating is there. Like, uh, you're going to beat your woman until she obeys you. Really? Yes, I really believe in what I'm saying right now. No, believing is different from understanding. If you know something, it's different from saying you believe. Okay, but, but I said, like, uh, let, 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 let me give you a scenario. Like, okay. Do you think a woman, like, for example, I'm sitting with you on a coffee shop, and uh, my wife, for example, she knows my deep secrets that no one knows except me and her, in Allah. And... Uh, for some reasons, maybe we had an argument or something like this. She, she started revealing my secrets to the point that she came when we were sitting and she started saying, yeah, you got this, you got this. And she started revealing your secrets. Don't you think that that one deserved beating in that scenario? Why didn't the prophet beat his wife when she revealed his secret to the other wife? Chapter 66, verse 3 to verse 4. Did the prophet beat his wife? Yes, no, no, he didn't. So why, why did you get the audacity to... To be to beat your wife when your prophet hasn't set that example. Yes, you're right. The example you, you mentioned, uh, we cannot see like Prophet Muhammad beating his wife. But uh, but if if you understand what I'm saying, the three traits of women, we have three ways of dealing. We have three three. Fasalihat faidun Even the fa, the word fa, you can find it in salihat. You can find it in faidun. No, I understand that point. No, I understand the salihat, kanitat. I understand that one. I'm only basing my arguments for adribu hunna. Now, let me, look, let me, let me give you a logical conclusion. Based on your claims, I'm not saying you are wrong. I'm not saying you are right. Right? I'm only helping you. Right? Because you believe in the same book and you uphold the same book I uphold. But it's just that your understanding is, is the problem here. Now, if you take verse 35, I'm going to help you. Verse 35, God says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِكَاكَمْ بَيْنَهِمَا Have you seen mm -hmm. the verse? Chapter 4, verse 35. I know, I know. Aha. Uh -huh. Then he is telling you, فَبْأَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ آلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ آلِهَا Then he says, إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِسْلَاحًا if they decide, they, they intend to reconcile, right? Okay, now imagine calling an arbiter from the wife's, from the wife's family. That is a judge to represent her, the, the wife. Then you are calling another judge, an arbiter, from the man's family. And they are coming to sit down. Then in front of the brother of the wife, maybe the, her brother is the judge. And then they are telling, the judge is telling the brother, the, the mediator is telling the brother that, hey, this man smacked the shit out of your sister. He slapped your okay. sister. Okay. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? If he is a true believer, he's not going to be against it. 
based on what a true believer based on what based on a dribble no like, here here we are talking bad. about logic no more believing take the issue of believing aside believing is something you like you just put your faith without having the the certainty on it you can believe something without actually verifying right we are talking about investigating because god says do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge right you agree yes okay so now since you don't have knowledge about how to beat the women according to god how did you come to the conclusion that this is how it has to go because god says he didn't say how but the doesn't mean that i should not do it in a certain way I can't but but so why will you do something you don't comprehend you don't understand no no uh, i comprehend is beating the, the how is i don't comprehend that so that For means example, that means you cannot beat your wife if you don't know how to beat her. Uh, can I can I can I play football if I don't know how to play football? You have a feet, just kick it. What? Just kick it with your feet. It's so good. if what if I score on goal? Huh? What if I kick and I score on goal? Yeah, I don't understand it. Also. You don't know on goal? Yeah, like you kick, you kick the ball to your own net. Like just uh, okay. Maguire, you know Maguire from Manchester United, the defender, you know Maguire? No, no, I don't watch football. Uh, oh, sorry, no. you missed that. Maguire is the best defender in terms of scoring on goals. So if if you say just kick the ball, I just kick it anyway. So it means if it's my wife, I just kick her anyhow or slap her anyhow, right? Yes. No, brother, there's a problem here. But in, anyways, anyways, uh, thank you for your time, uh, brother Ashraf. I think we have to talk about this on the back channel. We can speak about this. You have to take your time to study the Quran, uh, certain things about the Quran, not entirely. I'm not saying you are wrong or right, but I'm just saying this is hard for me to agree with you on this, right? And, and th yes, it's, uh, it's been the same way. I, did, I couldn't accept it the first time, but now I do. Okay, so let, let me tell you my understanding before you go. My understanding of the verse, it says men are guardians over women because of what God favors some of them over others, right? And because of what they spend from their wealth, that is why God made men as guardians over women. It doesn't mean women uh, def have deficiency in intelligence or something. No, women are, are very... Because huh? men are better than women. No, God, nev God, God never said that. You just said it in the verse. No, I never said it. Read this again. Men are guardians over women because okay. of what God favors some of them over others. He never said because men are better. Where does he say that? Yes, uh, some of them over others. Some of them are men and others are the women. So are you telling me if you are, you are the bodyguard of your president, of your country, of Morocco, if you are his bodyguard, does it mean you are better than him just because you are his bodyguard? Is he a woman? I'm asking you a question. If he is a woman, yes. If he is not, no. So if even if your president of Morocco is a woman, you are but the bodyguard of the president. You are better than her. Yes, in a biological way, yes. Biological way, how? Who made it? Who 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 gave you that credence to tell you that men are better than women? In which way? That verse you just said that. But the, the, in, in, in Arabic, if I if I want to say this is Khairun min min kaza or Khairun min zalik, did, did you see the word Khair in the verse? Did you see any comparative no. word? Com, com, God saying men are better than women. Did you see God saying that? <inaudible> yeah, it's favor. So are you saying when God favored the children of Israel with prophethood and everything, doesn't mean they are better than everybody in the world? He made them better than us in a in a certain time. No, he, he gave you favor. If I give you favor, doesn't mean you are better than somebody. Okay. Understand the difference. I can favor you with my phone, and I don't give your brother the phone. But it doesn't mean you are better than your brother just because I gave you my phone. Okay, but so so you agree with me that uh, uh, Allah favored men over women, yes? And he told you what favor is it? The favor is we to be guardians over them. Look, right now, if a woman comes to me to visit me and somebody is threatening to kill her or rape her, she will come and call me to protect her. Because I'm being favored as a man. Maybe I'll have strength to fight the enemy.
But it doesn't mean she's she like she's stupid or she lacks deficiency, deficiency in the head. That's not the point. Okay. Like when you you've been to the school before, you sit in the classroom with women, right? Yes. Can't a woman become first in the classroom? They are always the first in the classroom. So that's the point. You see, you just even acknowledge the statement. They are always the first in the classroom. Does it mean the men are stupid also? No. That's not the point. But in that instance, you see the woman is ahead. So if you say men men are better than women, in which sense did you what made you say think men are better than women? So you explained something that was cool. Like you said he they are not better, but he favored. Okay, I agree with you with you on Exactly. Is that yeah. a favor? God favored men so that we can become guidance for them. For instance, when a woman is pregnant, she cannot do a lot of things. We we the men have to help them to do certain things. It doesn't mean the woman is stupid or weak or something, but because she's in a position of deficiency, meaning she's pregnant, the man is there to help. The man has to go to work to bring money so that when she's pregnant, she doesn't need to do SS job to struggle. This is the favor God has done. It doesn't mean the men are better. God never said in any verse, men are better than women. Yes, you, you got me there, yes. Thank you. So now listen to my version of the explanation. Men are guardians over women because of what God favors some of them over others and because of what they spend from their wealth. This is the favor. Thus, the righteous women uh, will obediently guard in their absence by what God maintains. So if you have a righteous woman who is obedient, if you, the man, is helping this woman, she can guard herself. You know, some women, when you are with them, you are the one feeding them and you travel. She can go behind you and go to another man because you are not giving her money or helping her anymore. She can go to another man to sleep with him just to get money. Mm -hmm. So now this obedient woman will guard her presence. She will guard herself in the absence of this husband by what God maintains because she knows God is watching. That's why God mentioned the righteous women. Then he says, as for those whom you fear their discord, meaning we have women who are disrespectful, they don't want to listen to you, the, even though you are the provider. You give her money, you buy a car for her, you buy houses, but she doesn't respect you. She will argue with you, everything. Then God brought the condition. He says, then admonish them. You can give her advice. And then abandon them in beds. If you are married to a woman and you don't sleep with her, it pains her more than anything. Uh, but brother, brother Shuaib, uh, there is a, you're taking it like in a gradual way. I'm not taking it in a gradual way. I'm taking it as a case. You see, I'm taking like uh, the righteousness. If your wife is not righteous anymore, you're not you're not gonna leave her on on bed or beat her. The only thing you can do is uh, to advise her. You see, as but, to like every. But God didn't say if she's not righteous anymore. Does He say if she's not righteous anymore? Uh, when the nushuz happens to those three traits, it can happen. To but do you know? Do you know men can do nushuz also? Do you, or are you thinking that it's only women who have nushuz? No, no. There is a verse that says that. Men okay, so does that mean if the man also have nushuz, does that mean the woman should slap him also? There is nothing that says that. Says that in the Quran. Uh, nothing shows that, but it's based on nushuz. You are saying that the men can beat women. It's based on this nushuz only. Because in that verse, it's only Nushu's mentioned for God to bring the criteria. Yes, Nushu's of the traits. And the, we have the third way of dealing with women is beating her. And we have the third trait is uh, So if Nushu's happens to the third, uh, third trait, we're going to use the third way of dealing with women, which is beating her. So to simplify this before we end this, so according to you, does that mean any, any way I see Doraba in the Quran, it means to beat? No. Okay. No problem. So uh, I've I've gotten your point, uh, Ashraf. Uh, I I got your point. But uh, thank you very much. I I think this is where we have to leave it. Uh, then we can continue the next time when I come. So we we keep inshallah, up. Inshallah. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your time, and then we see you again. Thank you. Salam. Salam. Yes. Salam. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is another brother, Ashraf. Uh, from Morocco as you heard him that is his ad understanding of the verse he was trying to give but like I told you there are different levels of understanding people who understand something in this point later on things can become clear to them uh, so he is just giving his point of view to what he understand uh, so ladies and gentlemen 
I don't want to stay too long. If I stay too long, I will spoil it. I've done almost two hours, 30 minutes. I didn't want it to be long. I wanted to stay at two hours, but then he had something to say, so I had to bring him on. But we will continue again the next week. If I, if possible, I might be doing a program on, on JC Radio this Saturday, right? Uh, for those who have watched my last lecture on Saturday, last week, Saturday, I was there. So I will be doing again, God willing, on Saturday. If there happens to be the chance that I'm not there on Saturday, we, you catch me live the next Wednesday, God willing, right? Uh -huh. So thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for being present. Uh, I, I appreciate your support. Your, your, I appreciate. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Uh, Fatima Chin, uh, uh, Sister Natalia, uh, Teddy Doc Saeed, uh, Abdullah Abbas, uh, Ashraf Rami, uh, uh, Abdul Samad. Thank you all. Uh, Salis Jimmy, I see you. Hey, Salis Jimmy, today you are around with full time. Kankwe, I see you all. Uh, salam, Sister Stussy, Baba Sidu. Uh, thank you, thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for being available. And for those on TikTok, I see Sister Sophie Afalata Kilona, I see you. Uh, user 8031175657112 uh i see you uh thank you ladies and gentlemen for being uh present i appreciate uh your presence and your support it keeps me moving thank you very much abdul summit uh ladies and gentlemen this is where i have to bring the topic to an end i'm getting exhausted uh tikas tikas you have to rewatch the program i'm coming to an end tikas nagan kasalam uh, thank you all, Rashid. Uh, so before I go, like I said, this is the correctional officer uh, page where you can get the mesh like this. You, see, you can see the shirt I'm wearing, Baba Shrive, correctional officer. Yeah, different colors, different sizes. It has even the mug, uh, right? I will bring in the cup very soon. You can order your copy there and support the movement. Let's understand the truth from God, inshallah. So in a summary, what you need to understand is not everything you see in the Quran is literal. Some things are literal and non-literal, right? Uh -huh. You have to check the context, the subject, and the content. Some things can be understood non-literally, and then some things can be understood literally. But however, if you are taking things literally, you should have the clear knowledge of, of it so that you don't contradict the understanding thereof. So like I said, instead of telling somebody you are wrong or right, just ask them critical questions which challenges their faith or their belief so that they will see the lapses in their own beliefs. And then they can come to their own realizations independently without you saying they are wrong or right. That's the point. So ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your support and being with me for two and a half hours. Thank you all for the support. I appreciate this. Thank you very much. Uh, we get to meet again next week, hopefully. Peace out. And those on TikTok, I say, I will say peace out. Salam alaikum.